your own. All right. Everybody open your Bibles tonight. Turn to the book of Galatians. Start in chapter 1. Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. You know, and I'm, I'm starting to get off for this. Let's, let's stand out of respect for the Word of God being read here. Because this is the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Stop. Stop. <laughs> You didn't. I didn't. Okay, yeah. Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world, according to the will of God and our, our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and who would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that which we preached unto you, let him be accursed. Amen. As we said before, so say now I get, so say... I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. And here's my text verse right here. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Let's open up a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for letting me be here today. Thank you for these great friends, these men and women. Thank you for the two souls that got saved today. And just uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the Word of God. Please bless this time. Let it, uh, just let us get something out of this, uh, this preaching here. Just help me. Just guide me. And just let me always say your words tonight, Lord. I pray it's on your holy name. Amen. Amen. God may be seated. Go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5. We'll read one verse there. But keep a thumb in Galatians 1 if you could. Acts chapter 5, and verse 29. <coughs> in verse 29 in Acts chapter 5, it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That's good. Compare those two verses right there. Who are we supposed to please here, men? God. We're supposed to please God. If we don't please God... And like it says in Galatians 1, if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. That's right. I want to preach a sermon tonight. Why we left Bible Baptist Church of Uniontown, Pennsylvania, Pastor Dale Reddick. Why we left there. This track right here, One Evergreen Terrace, Uniontown, PA, 15401-724-4300. Two five one nine, Bible Baptist Church. I want to preach a sermon why we left there. That's good. Because I'm not here to please men. That's right. I didn't write this sermon to please you guys. Good. I didn't write this letter to please man. I'm holding up this Bible. I didn't got soul winning today to please man. I did it for God. Good. And that's what we're here to do, to please God. Number one reason why I left Bible Baptist Church, why we left Bible Baptist Church, and you guys can give me an amen if you agree with me why we left. Number one, he told me that you don't need the Bible to get someone saved. That's what he said. He said you do not need the Bible to get somebody saved. Go to 1 Peter 1.23. 1 Peter 1.23. It's the number one reason. This is one of the reasons. One of 14 of just one night why we left. Yeah, come on. Why we left Bible Baptist Church in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Pastor Dale Wright. Right here in uh, 1 Peter. In 123, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of, help me guys, incorruptible. incorruptible. Amen. By the Word of God. The Word of God. 
which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. What do we have to be born again of? The Word of God. The Word of God, which is incorruptible. That's right. I was told that you don't need the incorruptible to be born again. That's heresy. That's right, man. That's what that yeah. verse says. That's right. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't say anything else. You know where they get their message from? Let me get it for you. <laughs> this New Living Translation is where they get their garbage from. That's right. You want to hear it right here? Romans 10, 17 out of the New Living Translation. I think that's what the heresy is. Yep, I don't think. Romans 10, 17. I want you guys to hear this to see if you've ever heard this from a pulpit of a Hiles Anderson preacher. Hiles Anderson College, Pope Jack Scott. Yep. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. Out of the heretical book of the NLT, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing. Now the King James Bible says, hearing by the word of God. The incorruptible. What's this one say? Hearing the good news about Christ. Come on. Can that get you saved, the good news about Christ? No, it's the word of God, which right. tells you the gospel. Man. That is... Jesus died for our sins, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. That's right. As 1 Corinthians 15 says. That's right. That's where that piece, that's where they get that doctrine at. Where else would you get it from? Why don't you say you don't need Jesus Christ to get saved? That's right. If you don't need the Bible to get saved, let's get the fundamentals here. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is the Word. Revelation 19, go there real quick. Revelation 19 and verse. Go down to verse 13. I want you to see this. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ. In Revelation 19 and verse. 13. And he was clothed. Let's start up. Let's start at verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Amen. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as, flame, as a flame of fire, and on his hand were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but of he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That's his name. That's right. You tell me you don't need Jesus Christ to get saved, Death. You tell me you don't need the Word of God to get saved. When I went out and got right. a man saved today, I opened the Bible and showed the Bible. That's right. That's what I showed him. I showed Jesus Christ. I the Bible and showed the good news. I showed him the Bible. Good. That's what you have to have to get saved. You need the Word of God. You need Jesus Christ. Amen. Next, we say we don't need Jesus. All they do say that. They say you only need to know the name of Jesus. Right. There is none other name given under heaven whereby ye must be saved. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's what the Bible says. That's heresy. That's right. Heresy you sit there and say. You don't need Bible to get saved. That's right. Garbage. Yep. That's number one reason why we left. Woo. <laughs> what? One reason. That should be good enough to get out of that church. Amen. We got more. Let's slow it down a little bit. Just go to point number two, which you may not seem to be a bad point. But number two, he told me the term spiritual intercourse is an okay term. Come on. As said by Jack Scott. That term is not the Bible. Intercourse right. is not the Bible. And definitely the word spiritual is not for it. If you're right. trying to find lordship and salvation beside each other, it's not in the Bible. That's right. That word is not in the Bible. You know where it's at? It's in a sick book. It's called Divine Intimacy. That's right. Written by Jack Scott. Heresy. Yep. Sick. Wicked. Don't tell me that's an okay term. Go tell your kids that when you talk to men. Spiritual intercourse is an okay term. I ought to read this whole book to my kids. Man. And nothing would offend them because the words of Jesus Christ are wholesome words. Good. Right. Amen. 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 I would never, ever, ever say that to my kids. That's good. That's sick. Right. If you think it's okay, say it to him. Say it by the pulpit, I dare you. And say, I endorse this word. Spiritual intercourse. And don't tell me that's not sexual. What is it? <laughs> you have to have spiritual intercourse to get saved. That's what Jack Scott says. Read it yourself. 
Actually, don't read it. Good night. <laughs> Number three. This is the third reason why we left Bible Baptist Church of Uniontown, Pennsylvania. And I want a disclaimer here. The church members of that church are some of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire life. Amen. Amen. Man, if I, I've had so many memories with those people. But I'm going to tell you something. There comes a time where you got to say, you know what? I'm not following man. I'm following that book. I go to the church to hear the word of God preached. Amen. And when it's not preached anymore, you know what? We must just sit here and just watch TV because we'll get more out of that television then we'll get out of so much because we don't need the Word of God to get saved. That's right. We don't need the Word of God. Why don't you not use it in your preaching? No, you don't. You don't use it in your preaching. No wonder you believe that garbage. Preach the Word. Man, Be amen. Yeah. That's why I'm preaching the Word tonight. That's good. You know, I may not be anything. I don't even have a church. But you know what? This is the Word of God. And anyway, it stands on preaching this. It's a blood-washed, saved Christian. They have some power because the Bible is the power. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two of the sword. It's not my words. Right. You know what's offending you? It's what the Bible says. You've got to be born again and incorruptible by the Word of God. It's not what I say. It's what that says. That's right. The Bible. Amen. That's what powerful. I can get up here and scream all day. I see repentance preachers sweat until they look like they've lost 10 pounds. But it means nothing because it doesn't come from the Bible. That's right. That's right. And that doesn't come from the Bible. What says you need to get saved without the Bible? Show me that the Bible. You don't need the Bible to get saved. Now, that was point one. We'll get, we'll get past it, I promise. <laughs> I have believed that since the day I got saved. Good. Amen. You know why? Because I got saved that day from the Bible. That's right. Amen. And if you say you got saved without the Bible, and you're saved today because you believed on Jesus Christ, because later down the road you heard the Bible and got saved. That's right. Yep. That's how you got saved. Here in the Bible. Yep. Someone preaching to you, like Acts chapter 8 said. Amen. That's right. That is heresy. You sit in that church and listen to that, you're wicked. Yep. Don't sit in that church and listen to that. You know what? Take him out throw him out. Find a real man of God. Find an old deacon that will stand up and say the Bible's perfect. To say the word of God you need to get saved by it. Throw that man out. And if, but if you repent, forgive him then. But he's not going to repent probably. That's right. So throw him out. Don't sit in that crap. That is garbage. It's wicked. It's wicked. Point number three. Right, they're going to have a hard time getting through this. <laughs> One night, one night, one night. Who reminds you of one night? One night. This hasn't been building up for weeks and months. I can't believe we found this all out in one night. That's why we left. Thank God we go somewhere that says the Bible's the Word of God. Amen. Thank God we go somewhere that says the Bible's the spot. Good. Good. Amen. Thank God. I don't know what I'd do with that. Point number three. Went back, turn to 1 Corinthians 14, please. 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14. <clears throat> Number three, while we left. We believe the King James Bible is the preserved, inspired word of God. Amen. That's what we believe. We're King James only. We're not ashamed of it. We don't we don't say we're only King James, and that's what we use. That's right. That's right. We don't use it for a cup holder. It's the word of God. Amen. Amen. Number three, why we left. Number three reason. Went back to the Greek and Hebrew and made up some definitions and placed them where you please, like a Catholic priest. That's right. Mark it down like a Catholic priest. I sat at Catholic Church all entire life, had no idea what they were saying. Because they spoke in an unknown tongue. That's right. 1 Corinthians 14. You're just twisting Bible. Well, take this one for you. 1 Corinthians 14. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Verse 4, right here. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophes prophesies edifies the church. Let me ask you guys a question. You guys understand Greek and Hebrew? No. Anybody? No. You guys speak it fluently? 
What if I just started speaking Spanish up here? Because you guys would be like, oh, that's great. Good preaching. Good preaching, brother. Gracias for that sermon, you know? <laughs> that's what I wrote in my letter. He's speaking to himself and edifying himself when he goes back to dead language to explain away the Bible. Well, the Bible does need to be taken back to that language because it's preserved forever. Amen. Amen. Why, why would we go back, you know, if, if this world makes it another 400 years, which is probably not, but if it makes it on past the English language, God's going to preserve and inspire his word in a different language. That's right. That's right. Amen. Should they go back to the English language to figure out what the Bible means? Do they really need to go back to Greek and Hebrew? No. That's heresy. I don't care. You guys say I'm making the big deal. I'm, I'm making too big of a deal out of it. It's heresy when you go back to Greek and Hebrew. That's right, that's right. You make up your own definitions. You get out and preach how the Catholics make up their own Latin definitions, but it's okay to go back to the Greek. Yep. Wow. Wow's well, right, that one right there. The ball. <laughs> Psalms 12, 6 through 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver dried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O yeah. Lord. Thou yeah. shalt preserve them Amen. from this generation forever. Right. Good night, God. You had to make it clear that you were going to preserve the word forever, so we don't have to go back and just uh, have Jack Scott tell us what the Bible says. Thank God I don't have to have Jack Scott tell me what the Amen. Bible says. Because the Bible says you need no man, you need not that no man teach you. That's right. Yet the same Holy Spirit as well. Everybody in here has the same Holy Spirit inside of you. You have the same God inside of you. You can learn everything about the Bible. It's good to hear preaching, but it's really good to hear preaching that's out of the Bible. Because it edified the church, like the Bible says. That's good. good. Number four. Fourth reason why we left. Let's see what verse I have for this. Go to 2 Timothy 3.15. And then put a finger... In Acts chapter 17, same time. Acts what? Acts 17. <coughs> Number four, three, so why we left. Number four said, Paul did not have the word of God. He said, therefore, if we're right, that you have to have the incorruptible seed, therefore he cannot get anyone saved. Well, you're right. If he didn't have the word of God, he didn't get anybody saved. Right. That's what the Bible says. That may offend you, but that's what it says. If you let some give to the Lord with the word of this book, go back and get him saved. Good. Amen. Man. If you went back and told him that just some happy news or whatever, go back and get that person saved. That's one inside of you to finish the job. Good. Thank God, Jason, finish the job. He took like two hours sitting in that pool to finish the job. Finish with your start. Amen. It's something good. Man, pathetic. It's pathetic. That's right. That's right. You sit and listen to that guard. You believe that. You have no Christianity inside of you. It says, Paul didn't have the Holy Scriptures. Well, 2 Timothy 3.15 says, And that from a child, Amen. thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Does that contradict anything I've said so far today? Yep. That's everything I've said in one verse. Backed up by a whole bunch of other verses. Well, I'm pretty sure if Timothy knew the Holy Scriptures and Paul got him saved, I think he had the Holy Scriptures. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's what it says. How about Acts 17, 11? Go back to Acts 17. That's not enough for you. And there's more. There's tons more. Good that's night. Right. Yep, that's right. Good night, man. I can't go up here all day and just spoon feed you guys Bible <laughs> verses. You'd be here all night. <clears throat> Read the Bible. <laughs> Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the world with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Pretty sure they searched the scriptures daily, guys. <laughs> and I know some people don't believe the Old Testament's the Bible, but I think that's all they had was the Old Testament. Amen. Which is the Bible. I'm ripping out that page. That I'm going to do that one day. I like that page way too much, though. I just like it. But you know what? I like to just rip that page out. There it is. There is no New Testament. It's the Bible. It's yeah. the whole entire Bible. There's yeah. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. I am the Lord. I change not. Man. I like this page, man. I'll put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get that point across. It's good. Does that really change the whole Bible that I took out the word that said New Testament? Old Testament? Yeah, I mean, it calls it the New Testament church, but to say God, 
Jesus Christ never changed, everybody. Man, that's right. You're not saying Malachi is not the Word of God just because it came right before Matthew. That's right. What a bunch of morons. What a bunch of fools. That's right, yep. Well, here's one for you guys. So, they didn't have the Holy Scriptures, and here's their point to me that this is this is this is the words of wisdom from Pastor Dale Reddick that you don't need the Bible to get somebody saved. You guys want to hear it? Let's hear it. Let's hear his words of wisdom. And I had no idea he was going to say this, so I'm like, whatever he says, I don't know if I'll be able to refute it. But you know what? I know the Bible just a little bit, I guess, and then I'll be able to refute anything retarded, he says. <laughs> Go to John 6. Down your life this morning. Amen. John 6, 63. This is it. This is the big rebuttal. This is it. Watch out, guys. Hit the brakes, Jake. Watch where you're driving out of it. <laughs> he said, oh man, I just, well, I just want to go there, but I, I, you know, in Luke where Jesus witnessed to the thief on the cross, he said to me, Justin, you don't have to have Bible to get somebody saved. Jesus got the thief on the cross saved without the Bible. <laughs> wow. wow. I was like, really? That's your answer for all this? And they're all, they all looked at each other, all those tool bags. <laughs> Not in their heads. Because they're following a man. Right. You know what? I stood up for myself, and I should have said this verse, but this verse right here in John 6, uh, 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. Right. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Amen. Let me introduce you, Dale Reddick. The Bible is Jesus Christ, Amen. and Jesus Christ is the Word. Whatever He said was the Bible. Amen. He didn't have to come out and be like, "Words that in the Old Testament." He knew everything. Right. He is God. Oh. And the Word of God is God. Put it on your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> That's what I said to him. Not that crazy, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That is it. That's the words of wisdom that I sit there and go to house and college and learn that you need. Jesus didn't have the Bible to get somebody saved. Therefore, you don't need the Bible to get somebody saved. The child figured that out. They read John 1 1. That's right. Yep. That's all I used was John 1 1. I used Revelation 19, verse 13. Is that what it is? Where it says, Jesus is the Word of God. Comparable, spiritual, spiritual. Got the basics down. I said, what? <laughs> Jesus is God. Whatever he said, I'm pretty sure it was good. Amen. So I'm pretty sure all oh, what he all oh, what he said is in the Bible. Oh man, I can't believe that. Amen. Remember when thou comes to the, thou, remember me when thou comes to thy kingdom today thou shalt be a part. That was a Bible verse. Oh man, <laughs> idiots. That's Amen. what they are. Amen. That's the rebuttal. Of course he did. I mean his rebuttal to number one where it says you don't need the Bible to get somebody saved. He's like, sure, tell me you need to be a grump to get saved. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says. <laughs> So you, you tell me that you need the word of God to get born again? That's what it says. Yep. Amen. Heresy. Heresy. Right. Amen. It's what it is. I mean, you, know, you guys call it whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Go back to 2 Timothy. We're going on a lot of Bible tonight. Yeah. Because you know what? That's what this takes to prove this kind of message that we left that church for scriptural reasons. Not because some random I mean, I love those people. I'm gonna miss them so much, I can't all wait to see them in glory. You know what? I hope one day they throw that heretic out of there, Dale Reddick, and sit there and get a real man of God in there that says he needs the Bible to get saved. Oh, you just wait to hear the last point. You guys know it. But I'm going to tell you what, this pew, this pulpit might just go flying through that window. You better watch out. Oh. What are we got? Point four? We're on point four. I have 14. Slow. Come on. We're going to speed this up a little bit. No. <laughs> Number five. Man, this is going to be too. Some alright, hold on. <laughs> Good night, Todd. I tell you what, this is dumb. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't know if he's right, open your Bible, put a King James Bible and just stare at the verses. Just stare at it and be like, you know what, I you either you believe that or I don't believe it. That's right. <clears throat> he said, number five. And this was in his sermon, so everybody knows this. It went behind closed doors, they told us this. But I challenge you, anything he says, you'll never hear about in the pulpit that I mentioned right here. He'll never say you have to have the word of God to be saved. He'll say you need the truth to get saved. He'll never say the truth is the word of God, which it is. He'll say you need the good news. Because that came out of the NIT, NLT, like you saw, which is still paying price. I'm going to burn that thing later. Amen. <clears throat> Number five. Some of Psalms 
are not the word of God yeah. and are David's words. Come on. Let's combine this with number six. And number six, Psalms 55, 15 is a wicked verse. Okay, that's a, that's a really weird term. I've never heard wicked and verse in the same sentence, but we just did. Yep. And that's what he said. Well, 2 Timothy 3, 16 says that, you know, Rex a heretic, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, even though you're afraid to read that verse. It says all scripture is given by, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. Amen. Well, someone they do you not believe the book of Psalms? Jason went on that. I could go into that. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> but let's compare this. Let's do this. Everybody put a finger in John 1 1. I want everybody to see this. Everybody's got to see this. You'll see why I'm mad. Because I see heresy all over this. John 1 1, and then put Psalms 119 in your other finger. Psalms, right in the middle of your Bible. <clears throat> Psalms 119. I know we don't believe the book of Psalms, but we might as well there anyways. Actually, we did believe it around here. Yes. Amen. It is right. by inspiration of God. <clears throat> All right. So let me ask you this. Psalm 55, 15. Let's read that real quick. That's a good one. That is a good one. That's a good one. You know what? Just apply this to, like, Barack Obama if you want to. I mean, that, that's a good one to apply for. Psalm 55, 15. <clears throat> Let's see. Where did I put that? Oh. Let death cease upon them. And let them go cool down quick into hell, not shield. That's right. That's right. That's right. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. That's what Proverbs 55 15 says. I'm pretty sure David just told someone to go to hell. Yep. Just like Paul did. Paul told someone, why don't we be a curse? We read that when we all stood up. You guys right. stood up for that. That's right. Amen. Amen. You stood right. up and hear Paul say, go to hell. Amen. That's what he said. Because yep. we don't take we don't take this lightly, people preaching false gospels and you know, wicked people like Barack Obama aborting 4,000 babies a day. We, don't, we, we take this stuff a little more seriously. Yeah, it actually does affect us. That's why we say we pray at night, Barack Obama should die and go to hell. Yep. Yep. But, um, <clears throat> so he says it's a wicked verse. So I want you guys to look at John 1 1. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what John 1 1 says. That's God. Jesus Christ, the Word of God. We don't need to go back into that. That's right. Jesus Christ is perfect. They want to argue that one. But in Him was no sin. That's, right. That's what the Bible says. Go to Psalm 119. Let's see what the Bible says about the Word of God. <clears throat> Psalm 119, verse 160. The Bible says, Thy Word is true from the beginning and every one. Read that with me. Every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Every one. That's right. So thy word is true. Jesus Christ is the word. You're saying that's a wicked verse. You're saying you have a wicked Savior out there mm -hmm. that would sit there and pray for someone dying and go to hell. Right. How, about the, how about Jesus? God in Psalms says he's angry at the wicked every day. That's right. That's what he says. I mean, he is. All right? I know it's not your hallmark card of Jesus, but that's what he says. Okay? And you're going to sit there and tell me that's a wicked verse. You're telling me that Jesus is wicked. That's right. Because he is the word. He right. is the word. He's every word in oh. here. And you're telling me that's the wicked verse. Hey, that's heresy. That's right heresy. The Bible is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Amen. Right. God's perfect. Amen. Why do you think the Bible says the law of the world is perfect? Jesus is perfect. Everywhere in the Bible you see the word is true. Jesus' name is true and faithful. Yep. Do the same thing. Yep. I mean, come on. Amen. Amen. Good night. Good night, why? The Bible doesn't talk about money anymore. It does the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Okay. Good night. If you can't figure that out, you need to say talk about it. I really can't help you on that one. <clears throat> okay, number seven. We'll blow through this one. Number seven, he never said behind the pulpit, the Bible is inspired. Get every tape and you'll never hear it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. The Bible's inspired, everybody. Just Amen. Like we heard that last night. Thank God. The Bible Sorry. liveth and abides forever. Amen. Number eight. We're going to blow through a couple more of these because we got, we got the big one to go to. That's going to be nasty. <laughs> Number eight. 1 Timothy 4.12. If you guys want to turn there. Number eight. He made fun of me and Scott for how long we have been saved. I've been saved for five years. Scott's been saved for five months. Well, go to 1 Timothy 4.12. Come on. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Let no man 
despise thy youth. Amen. Amen. But be thou an example of the believers Good. in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You know what? I'm not going to sit here and hold myself up. But you know what? I have stood beside Scott Brook and I know he holds his Bible and goes up to somebody and says, Hey, it's eternal life for the believer. Amen. I respect Amen. that man Amen. more than anybody that sits there and says, All this garbage. You're going to tell me I respect him more. Hey, don't let no man despise thy youth. If you hold the Bible, it's the Word of God. You don't need anything else in that's the right. world. That's, that's to right. God. You got the Word of God. Right. And I hold you guys higher than anybody else in the world. I'll let you know that I do. I hold you guys more higher than anybody but God himself, obviously. Sorry, guys. You know, don't want to offend you there. But, I mean, you guys are soul winners. You know what the Bible says. You believe it. You love this book. I see it every day. Then you know, let no man despise that. Don't yeah, let anybody yeah. don't push you around. You know, yes. just because we don't pastor a church, just because we don't have a wife to tell us how to lead a church. Woo! Don't let anybody yeah. talk yeah. about Preach the Bible. <laughs> Take that yeah. one. I would mess somewhere. <laughs> I would. I'd just do it. I'd do it. I just wouldn't have my wife send out letters. That's what I wouldn't do. You know, that's, that's why I wouldn't do it. You know, I get mad. I get up from pee and sit down. That's what I do. Amen. What was he doing while that? His wife was sending out letters, pee and sitting down. That's what he was doing. Not standing up. Look that one. Young Baptist says Dale Reddick's pee and sitting down. That's what I just said. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's gonna get bad. It's Wrong. bad. Oh man. Amen. <clears throat> Go to Proverbs six. That's good. Mm. Don't let anybody tell you how to preach the Bible. You know, people make fun of us because we're not married, but you know, we don't have a wife to tell us how to preach. That's that. Oh wow, that hurts me. <laughs> that that hurts real bad. I'll have some wife to tell me, oh, that's too rough. You know what? Oh man, I can't wait to tell you to married. Things I'm gonna say. <laughs> they're just gonna. They're no way. They won't know what to say. They'll be all right there. Look at Everett. <clears throat> It's like Mark Turner said, he runs a checking account in that house. That's good. Don't get over it. You know what? Preach the word. Okay, so we're off that point now. All right, so I want to read Proverbs 6.16 to you guys. And six, these six things doth the Lord indifferent. Come on, oh, come on. Come on. Oh, oh, my bad. Sorry about that. Right <laughs> these six things doth the Lord hate. Oh, man. Good night, God. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that are shed innocent blood. Let's just stop right there. And I you know, I, I want Jason to give me an amen on this one. That this was a lie. <clears throat> he lied behind the pulpit saying that Jason said Jack Scott's final authority is the King James Bible. Come on. That's a lie. That's, That's what right. that is. And I have here that this is a lie no matter what Jack Scott says because he believes there are errors in the Bible. You know what? John Hagee thinks the Bible is his authority. <laughs> but he has a chart that's the biggest stupid thing I've ever seen in my entire life. John Hagee thinks that Jesus Christ didn't even... Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. Jack Scott didn't believe that he believes Jesus created son. <coughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next point. Jack Scott believes Jesus is a created son. All right, well, that one's out there. So. All right. Go to Matthew 5.18. You know what? Go to Matthew 5, 18. This is it. I'll tell you what. If you guys aren't mad about this, I don't know what's wrong with you. This just makes me... Oh, this is cool with me. Anybody got a King James Bible? Can I borrow real quick? Can see yours real quick? Thank you. He held up two King James Bibles. This is point number what? <laughs> point 10. Oh. Good night. He held up two King James Bibles and said, which one's perfect? That's what he said. Which one's perfect? An Oxford to Cambridge. I'll give him that one on that. He said it was, oh boy. Oxford and Cambridge. Well, there you go. Which one's perfect, Justin? Which one's perfect? Well, the Bible says in Matthew 5.18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Now, this whole issue of discrepancies, and people, oh, you know, these scholars say and stuff like that. If I could just find this verse, I'd read it to you. And that's what I'm thinking about. You know, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. God said He preserved the Bible. Amen. Amen. We didn't say we preserved it for it. We're not going to help Him out with that. I think right. you think you can do it. Amen. Amen. There's no discrepancies. My King James Bible, this is the preserved, inspired Word of God. You can tell Jack Amen. Scott, put that somewhere and smoke it. That's good. That's right. That's right. Amen. Don't, right, don't right. ever hold up two Bibles in my face and ask me which one's perfect. I don't get mean. I did. Oh, man. 
You've heard of Tim the Tool Bag. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. I'll tell you, there's a can of Tool Bag Creamer. <laughs> <laughs> told me to calm down. But you know what? You are a Tool Bag. You sit there in that office and follow that man. Yeah, He's man. following you right in the direction of heresy. If you want to disagree with everything I've said tonight, you just sit there and say, I don't agree with the Bible. That's right. We need the Bible to get saved. Man. Paul had the Bible. Believe right. it or not, Paul had the Bible when he preached. He didn't just preach um, Titanic sermons or something like that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 5515 is not a wicked verse. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Number 11. Go to Hosea 915. Hosea 915. Oh, oh this is going to be mad. You know, we, we don't love faggots in this house. That's right. Yeah. Give me an amen, guys. Amen. amen. That's right. Yeah, Good night. You know why? Because they're haters of God. They hate God. That's right. That's just what the Bible says. Sorry, everybody. I know that just offends somebody, but... <laughs> yeah, that's what the Bible says. Good night. Good night, bye. Okay. Jose, this is point number 11. One night, everybody. One night. Hosea 9.15 says, oh wait, okay, <clears throat> point number 11 while we left. He said we are an abomination for believing this hate doctrine. We're an abomination because we believe God hates some people. Well, I think they're an abomination for saying God hates everybody. But, yeah. you know, yeah, no doubt. Now, when you think about that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. But you know what? There are some people that God hates. He loved them so much he died for them. But you know what? Now he's just like, no, I hate you. Yeah. So, okay, well, we'll find that from the Bible. So who's an abomination if, uh, if God hates people? Who's he calling an abomination? That's for this Bible. Because I'm about ready to read you something. In, uh, Hosea 9.15. All their wickedness is in Gilgal. For there I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. Sure. All their princes are revolters. That's what the Bible says. Let me introduce you to the Bible, everybody. That's what the Bible says. God hates some people. He doesn't hate the random old man walking down the street. I can just go trip some old guy and beat him with a cane. Are you serious? <laughs> Good great. I mean, I'll tell you what. Some of the dumb things I've ever heard. Oh. But you know what? There's haters of God out there. Like the fags everywhere. You got right. rock and ball. Right. And you got all those queers in the cabinet. Yep. That need to stay in the cabinet. Whatever that sermon sucky needs to preach. <laughs> Whatever it is, God hates them. God says he will love them no more. He says, him that loveth violent, his soul hateth. Right. That's what the Bible says. Okay, so he's calling God an abomination on that one. I'm getting tired, guys. I'm hurting. I'm just hurting. All right. Number 12. Jeez, oh, I'm just going to get through this one. He said, we are sowing discord among the brethren. <clears throat> Proverbs, Proverbs 6.19 says, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Amen. Oh, wait, that doesn't say duck. I'm pretty sure that's not in there. Here's what I read. I'll just quickly read it off. Apparently putting something on my personal Facebook, people add me as friends, logging on to their Facebooks, and writing on my Facebook, and selling Discord. And he never say anybody watching our YouTube videos was Discord. He clearly just wanted to take me in the back room and be me and Scott. All he did back there was tag me personally because he is wrong about these subjects. Yep. No, nope, that's, that's what I'd say about that one. There's no Bible verses for how stupid someone can be, but, you know, <laughs> actually there are. We could go on toward force in those, but... He's in. <laughs> Number 13. Why? When Jason asked him about Psalms 55, 15, which Reddick said it was wicked, and said hate there doesn't mean hate, when hate isn't even mentioned in that verse. This just proves he's placing that definition wherever he wants. Well, Proverbs 6, 16 and 17 says God hates a lying tongue. When you sit right. there and say that hate in that verse doesn't mean hate, which hate's not even in that verse, the Bible says let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell, for witnesses in their dwellings and among them. No, there's no hate in there. All right, here's a big one, everybody. All right. Come on. Get him. All right, hold up. You know, I, I believe this since the day I got saved right here, this doctrine we're about to talk about. It's good I got saved that day. But, yeah. Good I didn't get saved twice or anything like that. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but... I'm going to read this off, and this is what he said to Jason and Shuttler. This is what he said to these guys, and I, and I have to go off their word, which I take their word a lot better than a uh, man that tells me I don't need the Bible to get saved. I'm pretty sure I'll trust anything he says. <clears throat> he said, number 14, and last but not least, there is one, and there are some I've forgotten, I'm sure. He told my brother that us preaching Jesus paid it all. The eternal life of the believer. Come on. 
that someone has to believe it is eternal, he said us preaching that is adding works to the gospel. Wow. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. But Amen. to him, you want to know how believing is not a work, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him to justify the ungodly. Sure. Faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. Amen. Go to 1 John 5.10. Someone yeah. who doesn't believe that it's eternal is not saved, everybody. Right. Right. They are That's trusting right. worth salvation. Let me just throw that down there for you right now. Oh, man. This just, oh, man. I'll tell you what. This just makes me, oh, man, man. 1 John 5.10 says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Amen. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of His Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. Amen. Eternal life! That's right, man. Not a prayer. He didn't give us a prayer. We have to pray a prayer to be saved. He gave us eternal life. How we get it in this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath, that, that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things are written unto you that believe! On the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, Amen. and that you may believe Amen. on the name of the Son of God. Romans 11, 6, and that by grace is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed right, right. in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world, and he gave the only Son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'll preach what Jesus Christ preached. I won't preach anything else. Amen. I'll preach the everlasting life of the believer. Amen. That's what the Bible says. That's right. Amen. That is what it says. Amen. Everlasting life, eternal life. That's what God said. Amen. He that believes on the Son is not condemned. That's right. Amen, brother. He that believes on him is condemned. Not believed on him is not condemned because he believes not the record. What? Oh my goodness. Amen. Amen. All good. the notes back. Where are they at? There they are. Amen. I'll preach what Jesus preached. I don't need no man to tell me what to preach. That's right. That's right. They tell me to sit there and pray a prayer. Show me one time the Bible so I'll pray a prayer to get saved. That's right. One time I want to see it. I want to see it one time. How about I show you, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Man. Believest thou this? Yea, God, I believe that thou art the Christ that should come in the world. Man. That is what the Bible says. Amen. And Philip preached the other year. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. That's what he yeah. said. And if you want to sit in that church and listen to that crap, I'll oh, yeah, the rest of my sermon. I don't know where it's at. But you know what? I'm done with this. Because if you want to sit in that church and listen to that, you know what? You're wicked. That's right. You're right. wicked to sit there and say that preaching eternal life is uh, worth salvation. That's right. Did Amen. Jesus preach works? He told. Uh, Nicodemus, how many times? Everlasting. Right. He that believed on him, not condemned. Right, he that believed not condemned already right, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen, That's it. Let's find more of that. I can't remember. I was like, oh man, I'll tell you what, that is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting Amen. life right. and shall not come in condemnation but path from death unto life. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. That's right. That's what it says. That's what, that's what Jesus Christ preached. You have to go to red letters and see where it says everlasting and you show me in the Bible where everlasting doesn't mean last forever. That's right. That's what he preached. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the Son, son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. We are not here to please men. I don't care if we don't go anywhere and hear that. That's what the Bible says. Don't ever back down on that. That's what God says. You need the Bible. You have to have eternal life to get saved. That's what the Bible says. I believe that since I got saved. Amen. I am never backing down on that. I will never please man on that. I'm not going to be a tool bag. Go to tool bag back to church and believe that garbage. Yeah. That they yeah. teach there. Yeah. That's Whoa. what Pastor Dale Red teaches. That you don't need the Bible to get saved. You don't need eternal life to get saved. They're just saying you don't need Jesus to get saved. That's right. Because he is eternal life. Amen. Right. Amen. For the way to the sin of death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go there and believe that. Go there and listen to that. You know what you do? Throw him out. Yep. Throw him out. Toss him on the street. I don't care if he's not hungry. He shouldn't eat. 
It's the Bible says you should work for your food. He's not working and preaching that. That is not work when you preach heresy. That's right. right. I can't believe I paid for him to tell me that. But I paid to God. That's what I paid for That's in my good. time. Amen. Right. Amen. That doesn't make you mad. I don't know what will. You know what? I, I, I have sat there and begged people on the doorstep. I have cried to them. I've talked to family members. And I told them it's eternal life. And sit there and tell me that's works. I ain't going to sit through that. Because that's what Jesus Christ preached. Amen. Amen. And we're going to preach what Jesus preached. And if you don't like that, go to Bible Baptist Church in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Pastor Dale Rett, and he'll tell you that's what to believe. It's that in word of prayer. You know what, Father, just uh, thank you for letting us be here tonight. And just thank you for your perfect word, God. Amen. I just love it so much. I just don't know what I'd do without it. I want to go to hell without your perfect word. And just right. thank you so much for it. Thank you for these friends. I don't know what I'd do without them. And I don't know if I'd be able to take this stand on the King James Bible and salvation by faith alone. We just love you and praise all your holy name. Amen. 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 Woo! Good. <laughs> Good <morning>. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta sit down or pass out. <laughs>